Let's play the following game. You throw a dice, and if you get a 6, the game ends. Otherwise, if you get any other number, for example here, a 5, you throw another dice. And if you get a 6, the game ends. Otherwise, you throw another dice, and so on, until you get that 6. That's it, that's the whole game. I never said this was the most exciting game. So, let's make it a bit more exciting. Uh, let's say that every time that you get to throw a dice, you get paid one dollar. Now, the question is, how much, in expectation, would you make playing this game? If you play again and again, a large number of games, how much would you make on average? Another way of asking the same question is, how many throws of the dice does it take, on average, to get a six? We will offer three solutions to this problem, ranging from the most straightforward and computational to the most elegant. If you'd like, you can pause the video here and see what solutions you can come up with. Let us denote by t the number of throws that it takes to get the first six, and note that t is a random variable, so it would vary from one game to another. And what we're interested in is the expectation of t. So before we derive this expectation, let's actually compute the distribution of the random variable t. So t takes positive integer values only, so let's compute the probability that t equals k for every positive integer k. The probability of t equals 1 is 1 over 6, assuming the dice is fair. This is because there are six possible outcomes and they are all equally likely. Easy enough. What is probability that t equals 2? Well, we need the first throw to be anything but a 6, which happens with probability 5 over 6, and the second throw to be a 6, which happens with probability 1 over 6. How about the probability that t equals 3? Now we need the first throw not to be a 6, the second throw not to be a 6, and the third one to be a 6. In other words, this probability is given by 5 over 6 squared times 1 over 6. More generally, the probability that t equals k is given by 5 over 6 to the k minus 1 times 1 over 6. Now, in order to compute the expectation of t, what we need to do is multiply each probability with its respective value and take the sum. Replacing the probabilities with their corresponding values, our job now is to evaluate an infinite sum. I have warned you that this solution is the most computational, and now we see why. Anyway, we have come this far, and we're not gonna stop so close to the goal. The first thing I'm gonna do now is pull the 1 over 6 out of the sum, since it is a constant. Next, I'm gonna use a neat little formula known as the infinite geometric series. We will take derivatives of both sides of this identity. The derivative of the right-hand side is 1 over 1 minus x squared, and for the left-hand side, we're gonna take the derivative term by term, and we're gonna use the fact that the derivative of x to the k is given by k, x to the k minus 1. We multiply the left-hand side and right-hand side by 1 minus x, and finally, we replace x with 5 over 6. And lo and behold, the left-hand side is exactly the formula that we found for the expectation of t. And the right-hand side simply evaluates to 6. The answer turns out to be surprisingly clean, despite the fact that the formulas we used were kind of messy. You might wonder if there is a better way to go about this problem, and indeed there is one, and that's what we will do next. Before we do that though, we make few observations. Incidentally, the answer happens to be 6, which is the face of the dice we were looking for. 
This is easily seen to be just a coincidence though, since the answer wouldn't change if the game had stopped after say a 4 rather than a 6. The 6 actually comes from the fact that the probability of getting any number from a fair dice is 1 over 6. And more generally, if an event has probability p of happening, we expect that it would take 1 over p tries before the event happens for the first time. For example, it would take 2 coin flips on average to get the first head, since the probability of getting a head or a tail is 1 half. Let's now move on to the second solution. This solution relies on a clever recursion. The basic idea is that when you throw a dice, two things can happen. With probability 1 over 6, you get a 6, in which case the game ends right away. Otherwise, with probability 5 over 6, you get some other number and basically you have just wasted the throw and you have to start all over again, hence the recursion. If we untangle this diagram, we get this repeating or recursive structure. The left child node is always similar to the full tree, and it becomes clear from here that the expected number of throws after the first throw is 1 over 6 times 0 plus 5 over 6 times expectation of t. Solving this equation directly leads to expectation of t equals 6, which is nice. An unexpected consequence of this way of solving the problem is that we recover the value of the infinite sum of k times x to the k minus 1 in a completely different way than we did before, without resorting to any derivation tricks. For the third and most elegant solution, we will use one of the most profound and yet strikingly simple results in probability theory, the law of large numbers. The law of large numbers simply states that as you repeat a random experiment a large number of times, the outcome will converge to the theoretical expected value. For example, if you flip a coin once, you can get either a head or a tail, and it would be impossible to tell which one you would get in advance. But if you flip 100 coins, you can predict with some confidence that about half of the flips would be heads and the other half would be tails, and your confidence would grow as the number of flips increases. Back to the problem, we will now think a little differently than we did for the other two solutions. In fact, we will imagine a scenario where you don't play a single game, but a large number of games. I said a large number of games. Much better. And we will see in a second why that's useful. And let's put all the throws next to each other so that we have a long sequence of throws. Now, notice that every game has to end with a 6. So the total number of games is equal to the number of 6s. How many 6s are there in this sequence? We can use the law of large numbers to estimate the number of sixes to be one sixth of the total number of throws. We can also appeal to a simple symmetry argument since throwing a dice leads to six possible outcomes that are equally likely. So we expect each one of them to appear one sixth of the time. The number of throws itself, if we play a hundred games, is gonna be a hundred times the expected length of a single game. After simplification, we now have that expectation of t is approximated by 6. Note that up to this point we only have an approximation and not an equality. But this approximation gets better and better as the number of games increases and in fact becomes exact as this number goes to infinity. But since the approximation itself does not depend on the number of throws, then we actually have an equality here. This is one of those times where it feels like we are strengthening a result for free, meaning we go from an approximation to an equality without any extra effort. And this is thanks to the law of large numbers. If you want to check your understanding of the three solutions presented here, try to answer the following questions. What is the median number of throws required to get the first six?
How many throws does it take not to get one six, but two sixes in a row? How many throws does it take to get a six conditioned on the fact that all the throws so far were even?